الحمد رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين الله اجعلنا منهم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين we start as we always do first and foremost by praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, showing him our utmost gratitude and appreciation. We ask Allah to bless, protect, honor, and compliment our beloved Prophet, our Messenger, our role model, Muhammad Rasulullah, his family, friends, companions, and everyone that follows him until the end of time. O Allah, increase from amongst them. O Allah, you are so perfect. We have no knowledge except for what you have taught us. So teach us those things that are beneficial to us. Allow us to benefit from what you have taught us. Increase us in beneficial knowledge and accepted actions. I mean, O oh Allah, we know that coming to your houses, praying in jama'ah, praying in the masjid, learning your deen, you know, doing tazkiyah of our nafs, purifying our hearts, learning what we can about the Qur'an and sunnah is something that is pleasing to you, something that you reward and something that you expect and want from us. So oh Allah, we are here doing these actions, accept them from us and use these actions as a means for you to accept our dua, accept our begging, accept our supplication to you for the sake of our brothers and sisters in Palestine that you alleviate their worries and their problems and you grant them help and victory and that you deal uh, with their rebellious oppressors. I mean. And so our topic for today, uh, as we continue in the different qualities that we want to include within ourselves to clean and purify our hearts by adding in these good qualities and removing these bad qualities is the pair of taysir and ta'asir. Taysir of making things easy and we do not want, we want to remove out of ourselves ta'seer, making things difficult. And so when we look at ta'seer, right, this is from a word that many of us know, yusr, to be easy, to uh, have things be easy going. And so we will actually talk about two things today, both the concept of yusr, of just being easy going in general, you know, letting things go and letting things slide, being easy in that regard, but then also ta'seer, that I make things easy for other people. I facilitate ease for other people. And both of these are good praiseworthy qualities. That I should be someone who is, uh, 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 that has yusr. I should be, make things yaseer for myself as well as for other people. I shouldn't make things difficult for myself, nor should I make things difficult for other people. And so when we look at yusr, when we look at yusr, this is عَمَلٌ فِيهِ لِينٌ وَسُهُولَةٌ وَانْقِيَادٌ This yusr is any action that has lean in it, softness, suhula, it's flexible, it's, it's uh, uh, malleable, and inqiyad, it's uh, 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 leaningness, it, 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 lent, it bends over and it submits, meaning it's easy in that sense. And taysir is to now go and produce yusr. Right? رَفْعُ الْمَشَقَّةِ وَالْحَرَجِ to remove difficulty, to remove burden on al-mukallaf from someone that's legally responsible or anyone really. In a way with matters, with decisions, with actions that again do not make it burdensome on an individual. It does not become hard on another human being. And so first we'll talk about yusr itself. Before we make things easy, what does it mean for yusr to be in our life? For yusr to be in our life. Now with this, it should be noted that yusr in your life and my life is going to be different. Something easy for you versus something easy for me can be very different. And so there is a level of subjectivity. There is a level of ease for you versus ease for me versus ease for this person and that person. There is going to be a difference here. And so we'll look at it as what first, what does it mean for yusr ease in my life? What does it mean for yusr in my life? And so that's the first topic that we'll get to. But even before getting to yusr, we need to know and acknowledge yusr and ease is not that I do not try anymore. It doesn't mean that I do not struggle, that I do not put in effort. When we look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ, he had yusr. He was easy going, but he did not stop himself from doing things that were hard. Because praying, there is a level of difficulty. Coming to jama'ah, there is a level of difficulty. Donating a lot of money, there is a level of difficulty. Keeping my mouth shut when I shouldn't speak, there is a level of difficulty. 
for the Prophet ﷺ to do Qiyam in the middle of the night for hours, there is a level of difficulty. So when there is reward at hand, when there is a way to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at hand, that is not the realm of yusr that we're talking about. In that case, do mujahada, go and struggle, you know, go and do the difficult thing, right? But yusr, rather in our perspective, is that uh, 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 when I make a mistake or in the regular matters of my life, that I am easy and gentle with myself. For example, if I happen to commit a sin, if I happen to make a mistake, if I happen to uh, uh, do something that is impermissible, I shouldn't be so hard on myself that I just say, you know what, I'm a lost cause, I'm a loser, shaitan already took care of me. Why even try to be a Muslim anymore? I'm already doing it. I'm already going to hell. That I shouldn't be so hard on myself that I think one sin of mine and I'm gone. Right? That doesn't mean I don't care and say, oh, I'll sin whatever I want and however I want. No. There is a sense of nadam, feeling remorse, of qat, stopping the action, of uh, azam, that I will make sure that I do not commit the action again. But I do not completely say, you know what? I am damned and set to go to hell, the hellfire. I'll do whatever I want. I'm done for. That is the point that we're talking about. Do not be so harsh with yourself that you just throw yourself under the bus. That is the point that we're talking about. That is the context we're talking about being having yusr. And so yusr here is not mutlaq. It is not unrestricted. It is not in every which way. Because I'm going to make mistakes, you're going to make mistakes. Or, you know, if I go and, you know, for whatever reason, for my own personal self, that maybe I start a company, maybe I make an investment, maybe I make a decision in my life, and it didn't turn out to be that good. Right? Maybe I took a job and that wasn't a good job. Maybe I made a decision or a choice to do this or to take this path or to start this business and it didn't work out. I shouldn't be so harsh on myself that I'm saying, what is wrong with me? I'm such a you know, bad person. I'm such a terrible individual. No, it's okay, calm down. We all make mistakes. We all have shortcomings. We all are going to have slip-ups. And so I do not beat myself up. I'm not so hard and harsh on myself. Because even we find the, our greatest of examples, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they committed sins as well. This isn't to justify. This isn't to say, oh look, they did it, I can do it. But when they did it, they immediately turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They didn't lose hope. They didn't lose hope. So they had a sense of yusr in themselves. They had a sense of being... Uh, 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 some level of ease in themselves that I did something wrong and I'm taking it seriously but I hope that Allah forgives me I will do what I can to make up for it I don't say you know what I'm no good I'm a, use I'm a useless person right that is not the way we view ourselves or we view our actions or we view our mistakes right we are to you know let things go and be easy with ourselves you know, if you know you go home today and you're warming up food, you take the food out of the microwave, then it falls on the floor, right? Don't be like, what kind of a terrible human being am I? You know, I don't deserve to exist anymore. You know, do not go extreme and blame yourself. Again, that doesn't mean we don't fix the wrong that we do. It doesn't mean that we take our sins and, our, and the, the, the mistakes that we make seriously. But I do not beat myself up. I do not beat myself up. That is the point that we look at. Because sometimes, you know, this may not apply to you at all. But there are other people in our community, some of us, when we do something wrong, we think it's the end of the world. And we are, and there, and there are Muslims that think, you know, I did something so bad, I shouldn't live anymore. Or I'm going to physically hurt myself. Or I'm going to, you know, harm myself. This is not how we do it. This is not the approach that we take. There is yusr and ease in how I deal with myself. The next category is now that I have ease and yusr when I deal with and see and interact with other people. Again, this is still the context of being easy as opposed to making things easy. Right? And again, this is something that we see exemplified by our Prophet and Messenger, our role model, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger of Allah. May Allah bless and protect him. Right? In the sense that when he would see other people making mistakes, when he would see other people slipping, when he would see other people doing something wrong, he was not the, uh, uh, bringing down the hammer in every situation with the most harsh response. When 
harshness needed to be there, he was harsh. But in most scenarios that could be dealt with with ease, he dealt with it with ease. And again, you can, I'll give a very simple example. You know, if a five-year-old, you know, accidentally breaks something, that's, if I go yelling and screaming and break ten more things, it's hard for everybody. I just made a bigger problem. Right? And so in that case, be easy, be gentle. Why do you do that? Well, try to do your best to hold things. Right? Or whatever the scenario. Maybe you don't even tell that to a five-year-old because what's a five-year-old going to pay attention to? Their hands are always, you know, got something messy in them. As opposed to, you have a grown adult who goes and abuses someone. In that case, you don't say, oh, you know, maybe you should be... Not. No, in that case, you be upfront, you be clear, you be firm. Say, this is not how we do it. If I need to get physical, if I need to get involved and physically get in, then I will do so. So again, in all of these things, there is an aspect of hikmah in all of these attributes. But again, we want to focus on, can I treat people with an easy temperament? Can I interact with people with an easy temperament? Right? And we see this again in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who saw and understood the different scenarios and ways that people came to him. He saw that when someone needed the harshness, needed the strictness, or crossed a line, how to be strict and clear in those regards. Or when someone was new, when someone didn't know, when someone had no idea, he was soft and he was easygoing with them. We all know of the famous incident that the Bedouin, he uh, came into the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ and he went to one of the, the sides of the masjid and he just started to urinate and started to go to the bathroom. The Sahaba were ready to, about to beat him up. Hey, what are you doing? This is the masjid, it's the house of Allah. Don't do this filth in here. They were ready to beat him up. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ understanding, hey, you think this guy knows? You think this guy is trying to defile the masjid? No, he's not. If he was, the response might be different. But in this case, he just didn't know. This person just didn't know. So he said, let him finish. If you mess with him, it might be way worse. And then go and put some water to remove the filth. And this is how we teach people. Again, this is in the case of someone doesn't know. They are ignorant. They are not intending wrong. Again, when someone is harming and they are intentionally doing wrong, there's a different response. That's not the scenario, right? There was another instance in which the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi uh, Wasallam, uh, you know, he was leading salah and there was a new Muslim or someone who didn't live in Medina at that time who came and he joined the prayer, right? And so he was new, he, he only knew some things about the religion, right? And we see this again with many of our new Muslims that come into our masajid. Someone comes from another town, someone comes from, you know, they come from a different part of the world, you know, they may have a different madhab, you know, they may have different, you know, cultural norms. Or someone's a new Muslim, they're a convert. They became a Muslim. And they don't, you know, we half of us here are speaking Arabic, the other half of us are speaking Urdu. And someone who doesn't know either language is like, I don't know what you're saying, I don't know what you're doing. And I barely know how to pray right now, right? And we should understand what realm and reality they're coming from. How do I speak to them? How do I talk to them? How do I teach them? If people who have been Muslim for 20, 30, 50, 70 years make mistakes, you don't think someone who just became a Muslim last week is going to make mistakes? So how I treat them, how I respond to them, how I teach them should be with yusr, easiness, softness, and gentleness. And so the story, there's a little bit funny, right? So they're praying, they're in jama'ah, and one sahabi sneezes. And we're taught by the Prophet ﷺ that outside of salah, if I sneeze, I say alhamdulillah. If I sneeze, I say, Alhamdulillah, every bit of praise and thanks belongs to Allah. People that hear me say, Alhamdulillah, so if I sneeze, I say, Alhamdulillah, you heard it, you say, Yarhamukallah, may Allah have rahmah on you, may Allah have mercy and compassion on you. And then I respond back, saying, Yahdikumullahu wa yuslihu balakum. May Allah guide all of you and, you know, uh, uh, fix and improve and mend your livelihood and your affairs. And so, again, he's a new person, he's a new Muslim, he doesn't know everything. So he heard someone say, sneeze. And so, he wants to jump in, I want to be a good Muslim, I want to, you know, take care of my brothers. He said, Yirhamuk Allah in Salah. Now the other Sahaba are like, well, because they know they're not supposed to speak. So this companion, he says, everybody just started to look at me in Salah. They just looked like, who is he? And he says, Faraman il qawmu bi People just started glaring at me like, what are you doing? Right, and obviously not saying anything, just glaring at him, looking at him. 
And so he sees this, and again, he doesn't know. So he says, why are you staring at me? Akbar in Salat, stop staring at me. Right? And then everyone just keeps just, you know, like, who knows, they're hitting their legs, and they're probably going, Push, something like that. He says, okay, I guess I'll stop talking. I guess I'll stop talking. Right? And then after the Salah is done, right? Uh, as he's narrating this, he mentions it out of order. He says, Fabi Abi wa wa ummi. May my mother and father be the ransom for the Prophet. Give up my parents for him. And my mother and father be his ransom. I've never seen a teacher ever before in my life or ever after in my life that was a better teacher than him. That taught me in a more easy, simpler manner than him. Right? He wasn't harsh with me. He didn't hit me. He didn't curse me or yell at me. All he said was, قال, He's explaining what did the Prophet ﷺ teach me? How did he tell me after salah that I found him to be the best teacher? He came up to me and he said, listen, this salah, when you pray salah, it's not appropriate that we speak, humans speak in salah. Salah is a time for tasbih. We declare Allah's perfection. Takbir, we say Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. And Qiraatul Quran and we read Quran. He didn't say, what is wrong with you? This is how you speak in the masjid? Nobody taught you how to pray? Where did you come from? What's your name? Who, who is teaching you? Get out of my mind. Don't do this ever again. No. Simple thing. Hey, this is salah. This is not what we do in salah. And this was such a soft, gentle way that the Prophet wasallam told him this. He just fell in love with the Prophet wasallam. And it's not mentioned in the narration, but we can assume of all of the other things we know about the Prophet ﷺ, that he probably came up to him, you know, looked at him, said salam to him, shook his hand, smiling, nice, caring, you know, open, gentle personality. And this is how he told him. Right? And this completely, you know, completely changed the scenario. Whereas if you can imagine if that Sahabi wasn't told and instructed like this by the Prophet ﷺ. He'd be like, this is what these Muslims do? I say, Yarhamuk Allah, I make dua for you and you start yelling at me and fighting me and you know, glaring at me. Right? And so he says, this is how great of a teacher the Prophet ﷺ was. Right? That so in such a simple way, he explained this to me. Right? And even we see this in how he interacted with you know, his young companion. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu was his servant. He would run his errands for him. And Anas was his servant went from being 10 years old to 20 years old. There's a big change, you know. 10-year-old is playing all the time. 20-year-old is a bit more, you know, serious. Especially at that time, you know, you're a grown adult man at 20, right? Uh, and so he says, the Prophet would sometimes tell me to go run errands. Go do this, go tell this person this, go send a message here. You know, I'm going to lunch at this person's house, you know, come with me, right? And he says, in those 10 years, he never was mean to me or harsh with me. He never said to me, if I did something wrong, why did you do that? And if I ever didn't do something that he told me to do, he never said, go do this, and I didn't do it. He never said, why didn't you do it? And sometimes really, you know, I, I think how... That almost seems impossible for us. <laughs> Those of you that have kids, <laughs> right? Is it... Can, can you imagine, I'm not saying 10 years, can you imagine one year, one month, not telling your kid, why did you do this? Or why didn't you do that? One month. Heck, some, for some of you, even one day. Right? Or even, you know, you, I, you know, I have students in class, like, why, why didn't you do your homework? Why don't you take your exams? Why don't you study? Right? But for 10 years, and it's not to say that Anas didn't make mistakes. He's 10. Right? In one instance, he says, you know, the Prophet, he told me, you know, go do this for me. Go do this for me. And so I went. And I ended up, you know, there were kids in the street. So I started playing with the kids. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he came and he saw me playing with the kids. And so he came up to me, you know, patting me. He said, he didn't say, what are you doing? Why are you playing? He said, didn't I tell you to go do something? He said, oh, yes, yes, I'm going to go do that right now. Right? And again, he's a kid. If he starts yelling and screaming at him, what's the fa'idah? What's the benefit? By him telling him softly, did the job get done? The job got done. 
the job got done. Right? And so, you know, this is again what we learn from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even sometimes when there was uh, difficulties within the city of Medina, sometimes his response was that of ease and being soft because his remark was, you know, I, I cannot have people thinking that, you know, I am going in, you know, uh, in some cases where people committed treason and they should have been put to death. So that if I go and do that, people will come and think, what is Muhammad doing? And so sometimes he, he thought about how are my actions going to be perceived? Again, I want to say, that doesn't mean at times he wasn't strict. He wasn't upfront. He wasn't blunt. He wasn't strict. But those were specific times where that was needed and required. Most of the time, it's yusr, it's ease, it's gentleness. And now, so that was in the sense of me being easy with myself and me being easy with other people. Now, the, the second point is making things easy. They see now. That was yusr. Now our topic is they see making things easy. Making things easy. Meaning, I may have a decision in front of me. And sometimes we just like to do things that are, we just like to do it the hard way. No, make it easy for yourself. Or if someone is coming and asking me for advice, someone is coming asking me for help, do I go and make it easy for them? Do I uh, 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 help and facilitate it for them? And the fans? Oh, can, can we turn on the fans on this side? You want the fans on this side? I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Can someone, can someone turn the fans on this side? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't know. Jazakallah khairan. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Right, uh, 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 um, sorry, I, I didn't know if someone was trying to say, I'm, I'm sorry, again, my, my, my apologies, I'm sorry. Uh, Afwan. Um, right, so making it easy for other people, and again, this is how we see, again, the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she would say, مَا خُيِّرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَيْنَ أَمْرَيْنَ إِلَّا اخْتَارَ أَيْسَرَهُمَا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa never had a choice between two options except that he chose the easier one of them. But in this context, the thing to note here is both of those were still good and valid and permissible. That doesn't mean one thing is easy, but it's haram. The other thing is hard, but it's halal. No, both things are halal, both things are good. Both things are permissible and we'll, co we'll come through to some of those examples. And so, when again, when I think about making things easy for myself, sometimes, again, there may be uh, 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 options that are in front of me. There may be decisions that I have to make. I shouldn't go and overburden myself and make it so difficult for myself. Right? I'm not saying don't do good deeds and don't strive hard and struggle for good. But if I can do one thing an easy way and one thing a hard way, do it. The easy way, do it the easy way, right? For example, you know, you know, I was told, okay, can I come on whatever tonight? Okay, I don't have anything tonight. You know, I had Juma khutbah, and for the rest of the day, I was pretty free. As opposed to, okay, let's say tomorrow I'm I got you know busy the whole day. No, I'm gonna force myself to put some time in the day that I already don't have any breaks to come do this. Pick the easy day. <laughs> pick the easy day. Don't pick the difficult time, right? Don't pick the difficult scenario for yourself and especially and especially when it comes to other people when it comes to someone needs my help someone is asking for advice someone is simply just doing something can I make it easy for them right? I see an elder person they have a hard time putting on their shoes can I go and get them the thing some person needs a chair can I go and make it easy for them right and we'll see again some of those examples in a little bit but when it comes to yusr and ease uh, uh, we find uh, a dua of Prophet Musa salam, in the Quran asking for this, right? After being asked, go talk to Fir'aun, he said, as is quoted, قَالَ رَبِّ شَرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ He says, my master, Rabbi, my Lord, my master, expand my chest, meaning make things light for me, remove my burden. وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي So Allah talking to Pharaoh? Not easy. Talking to Pharaoh is basically a death sentence. Allah, make it easy for me. Make it easy for me. Allah, I have a knot in my tongue. He said he sometimes he would stutter. Oh Allah, remove the knot, remove the stutter from my tongue. So that people can understand what I'm saying. So he made dua. Allahumma yassir li, yassir li amri. 
So there's nothing wrong. There's no lack of iman. It doesn't mean I'm a weak Muslim if I say, Allahumma yassir li umura, umuri. Allahumma yassir lana umura. Allah, make things easy for us. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean I'm a weak Muslim. This is what we learn from Prophet Musa alayhi salam himself. Right? And again, there are so many ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam about making things easy for other people. Right? And some of them are the most beautiful and powerful ahadith that are for your benefit, for my benefit. Right, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, مَن نَفَّسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرَبِ الْيَوْمِ الْآخِرَةً So beautiful. Whoever does tanfis removes a difficulty from, one of, from another believer. One of the difficulties and burdens of, their, of this worldly life. Someone has a financial issue, you make it easy for them. Someone has an you know, issue with their car, you make it easy for them. Someone doesn't have food, you make it easy for them. Someone needs books and pencils and notebooks and whatever, you make it easy for them. Someone is going through you know, emotional or psychological issues, you're there to listen to them and help them. You help them in dunyawi things, worldly things, material things. Allah will remove one of the burdens from the burdens of the Day of Judgment from you. What is a burden of this world compared to the burden of the day after? Someone's car breaks down. You want your car to break down or you want an angel to grab you and throw you into hell? That is the difference between an issue of this world. So my friend's car broke down. Do I go help him? If I help him, it, perhaps Allah will stop the angel from taking me into the hellfire. Because that is one of the difficulties of the hereafter. And one of the scholars very beautifully mentioned, in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you remove a difficulty from the worldly difficulties of someone, this is what Allah will do. So then he asked, what do you think Allah will do if you remove a religious difficulty from someone? So you help someone in matters of deen, in matters of religion. You help someone pray. Someone is feeling distant from Allah. You know, especially right now, you know, they may have a lack of hope. You know, they may be thinking, why should I keep making dua? You know, it's been four weeks. And they have distance with Allah. Go and help them in a dunya we thing. Who knows how much Allah will help you in the akhirah? Right? You go and help someone with Quran. You go and help someone. You know, coming to the masjid, you help someone. You know, calculate their zakah. You help someone get married. Dunya, uh, d dini things, religious things. Who knows how great of a help and and difficult, uh, how big of a difficulty Allah will remove from you in the hereafter. And then. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi he says, مَنْ يَسَّرَ عَلَى مُعْسِرٍ يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Whoever makes something easy for someone who's going through a tough time, right? And perhaps this is a difficult, or mu'sir, you know, someone is in financial issue. Someone's financially burdened, you know, they have a lot of debt. If you make it easy for them, you help pay their bills, you help pay off their debt. Allah will make it easy for you in this life and in the hereafter. Again, the Prophet is just encouraging us, go help. Make things easy for other people. And he tells us another way of making things easy is I don't uh, 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 mention other people's private things. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ If I conceal and hide the faults of one of my Muslim brothers and sisters, Allah will hide my issues, my sins, my faults, my mistakes in this life and in the hereafter. How do I know that the sins I commit, nobody knows them? Not because I'm hiding them, or not because my hiding is working, but because Allah is hiding it, because someone, I saw someone doing something wrong that I didn't tell people. I know someone is going through difficulty. They confided in me. They said, you know, I'm really struggling with this sin. Please help me. And I don't go and share and tell everyone. It could be because of that, Allah will hide my sins in this world and the hereafter. And, and this is all in one hadith. And the end of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu says, Wallahu fi al abd ma kan al abd fi al akhi. Allah will continue to be in the help, the service, the aid of one of his servants as long as you are in the help and aid and service of one of your brothers and sisters. So he's encouraging us, go and help people, Allah will help you. You want Allah's help, go and help others. Right? May Allah allow us to be people who have yusr in our lives. 
Allahumma yassir umura, may Allah make our matters easy for us and make us those people that make things easy for us. In fact, in actually one of the hadith, uh, uh, the, the, the hadith wherein the, the Bedouin was urinating in the masjid, the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba Fa in, uh, 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 that, that you have bu'ithtum, fa innama bu'ithtum uh, muyassirin wa la bu'ithtum mu'assirin. That you have been sent. You, meaning Muslims, he's telling his Sahaba, bu'ithtum muyassirin. You're supposed to make things easy. Wa la bu'ithtum mu'assirin. You're not supposed to make things difficult. And we'll end on going through some of the examples of what, this, what is ta'asir. What does it mean to make something difficult? Right? Because we talked about ease, but I, now I should know what are scenarios in which I can make things difficult. And so ta'asir is أَن يُشَدِّدَ الْإِنسَانُ أَن يُشَدِّدَ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ فِي أَمْرِ الدِّينِ بِالزِّيَادَةِ عَلَى الْمَشْرُوعِ أَوْ فِي أَمْرِ الدُّنْيَا بِتَرْكِ الْأَيْسَرِ مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ إِثْمًا that ta'seer is and you should be insanu ala nafs that I'm harsh on myself or I'm harsh on other people I make things tight restricted difficult on myself or other people in religious matters by going above and beyond that I add and make more burden in something that is religious that is within the deen or in dunyawi things that I make it difficult and I make it something haram right and so this takes place in four different ways that I make things difficult on myself in deen, in religious matters. That I make things difficult on myself in dunyawi matters, worldly matters. Number three, I make things difficult for other people in dunya, in religious matters. And number four, I make things difficult for other people in dunyawi matters. So with myself in religion and in life, and with other people in religion and in life. And so what are those ways that I can make things difficult on myself? Right? And typically, you know, most, we don't see this too much in our society anymore, right? Uh, but for those of, we may know some people who are like this, but this isn't typically what most, the scenario, most of us are in, right? We find sometimes that some sahaba and some people, they go above and beyond in making their good deeds difficult. They make it hard. What does that scenario look like? Once there was a sahabi who basically uh, uh, was fasting a nafil fast, and he said, you know what? Fasting nafil fast, no problem. Is it a little bit difficult? Yeah, but there's good. But there's good in there, so nothing wrong with that. But he added things that are not religious in nature. He said, you know what? I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast, but I'm going to stand outside in the sun. No shade. And on top of that, I'm not going to talk to anyone. So he just... <laughs> difficulty on difficulty on difficulty. Fasting, no problem. You go and do that. There's thawab, there's reward. It's a hasana. But if you go and you make things difficult in a, in a, in a way that is not accounted for, that is ta'asir on yourself. This is what we should not do. This is what we should not do. And the Prophet ﷺ told him, why are you doing this? Do, do, stop. You can keep fasting, that's fine. But don't do all this other stuff. Don't do all of this other stuff. Right? In another scenario, the Prophet ﷺ, he was doing uh, where you have a ruling, but then there's an easier ruling as well. In certain scenarios, there is a different ruling. You know, for example, uh, uh, you know, in Ramadan, it's, we have to fast, fard, to fast. If someone is traveling, then they have the option, do I fast or not fast? And so in one of those scenarios, the Prophet ﷺ took the easier option. And there were some Sahaba who said, oh no, that's the Prophet ﷺ, you know, I gotta be hard and tough on myself. We gotta go above and beyond. And so he heard that. He said, ما بال أقوامن يتنزهون عن الشيء أصنعه. What's wrong with these people? They think they're too good to do what I'm doing. فوالله إني أعلمهم بالله وأشدهم له خشية. I swear to God, والله I am the most knowledgeable of Allah and I have the most fear of Allah. They can't do things better than me because I'm the messenger of Allah. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Right? And one time there was a Sahaba who said, you know, I am uh, 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 going to pray all night every night. I'm not going to sleep at night, I'm going to pray all night. And one said, you know, uh, uh, I'm not going to eat meat ever again. And one said, I'm never going to get married. So the Prophet ﷺ, you know, heard this, he said, what, what are you doing? I exert myself, I do things that are hard. I pray at night, yes. But I 
also go to sleep. He says, I eat meat. I don't always eat meat, but I eat meat. And sometimes they don't eat meat. And I get married. So do not try and go overboard. Right? And it should be noted here, this doesn't mean you don't do anything hard. Do, you can do things that are hard. Don't make it hard. Right? Simplest example is, you know, coming to the masjid. We all know this is good. Right? Don't come to the masjid saying, I'm going to wear, you know, shoes and I'm going to put rocks inside of my shoes. I'm going to put rocks in my backpack and I'm going to walk to the masjid like that, backwards. On my hands. Why? Just, just if you're going to walk, just walk. Just do the good thing. Don't add all of this extra stuff to it. Right? We know we're taught Al-Ajru ala qadr al There is more reward if the amal, if the action is difficult. But don't make it difficult. Right? Is Hajj, Hajj is very difficult. Hajj is basically five days non-stop. You're going here, 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 and here. Nothing wrong with that. Do Hajj, it's difficult though. But don't go and make your Hajj overly difficult thing. I'm going to walk from America. I'm going to wear my ihram, you know, and I'm going to go do a walk right now. You just say, why? If you want to walk, okay, go walk from Medina. Okay, like, do, calm down a little bit. Don't walk from here. If you're going to swim across the Atlantic Ocean, you're going to, you're not going to make it. I'm sorry. Right? So don't go overboard in making it difficult. And then sometimes, right, we make things difficult on ourselves in the dunya. In, in, in worldly matters, right? That you know what? Uh, 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 there's, I'm not fasting, there's food that I like. No, I'm just not going to eat it, right? Or, you know, I could take this job, right? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live my life, you know, without earning money. When you have an easy option to, to earn, right? Or, you know, there is AC, you know, or there is, you know, something to make your life easier. No, I'm just not going to do it, right? So, so in some scenarios, we can say, you know what? I live a very luxurious life. I will abstain from some things to control my nafs. Again, that's not an issue. But if every single time you're just making your life hard, this is not the way of the Prophet Again, as our mother said, he was never given a choice between two options, both permissible, both good, both allowed, except he chose the easy one. He chose the easy one. And he is our example. Right? And another scenario, sometimes, again, we may be going through a lot of difficulty in our life. We may be going through difficulty in our money, or we may be going through a difficulty in our marriage or with our children. We may have, you know, emotional, mental issues, psychological issues. Don't think, oh, I'm so tough. I'm going to make it hard on myself. I'm not going to talk to anyone. No, go talk to someone. Get help. Can a Muslim brother or Muslim sister, can a therapist, can a counselor, can a doctor help you? Can they help you? Can they, you know, alleviate this difficulty from you? Don't say, no, I'm just going to deal with it. No, it's, you know, Remove the burdens from yourself. Remove the burdens from yourself. The third scenario is do not make things difficult for other people in deen, in religion. Do not make things difficult for other people in religion. And this, is, this comes out in two ways. Number one is sometimes people, they speak about the religion, they speak about Islam and they don't know what they're talking about. You see someone praying, oh, you're not allowed to pray like that. It's haram. No, it's perfectly fine. That's the valid difference of opinion. I'm allowed to pray like that. You cannot do that action. You cannot come here. You cannot, you know, do that. People just speak without any knowledge. People, they speak with, you know, no care and no concern. They're just trying to, you know, uh, speak whatever they think without confirming, without knowing what they're talking about. And when someone does that, you have made this religion difficult for someone. You have made it difficult for someone. And number two is... If I uh, 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 tell someone or teach someone in a harsh way, or I give them a harsh opinion not knowing, you know, how to give opinion. Right? So maybe someone is doing something wrong. Tell them, what is wrong with you? You don't know how to pray? You don't know how to make wudu? Did you just become a Muslim yesterday? You know what? Go, go pray at home. It's like, no. Teach people nicely. People are going to do things that are wrong. We've all made, done things that are wrong. But if I'm teaching someone that did something wrong, Teach them in a gentle way. Teach them in a nice way. Right? Or, or sometimes, uh, uh, we are not muftis. We are not scholars. And so, we may not know. Maybe there is a difference of opinion, but this is the opinion that I know. And I may be making something extremely difficult for someone. I may be making something extremely difficult for someone. 
Right? Someone may need a certain fatwa, someone may can follow a different opinion, but I don't know, and so I only tell them, you know, the difficult thing. Right? And so with all of these, especially for all of us, think to myself, do I know the different opinions about how to pray, how to raise my hands, how to, you know, hold my hands in salah, right? And, you know, you, if I don't, then I should not speak, right? You know, sometimes uh, 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 for, for, for the Hanafis, you know, we don't do Rafu al-Yadayn in Salah, right? And so sometimes people, they will come and tell the Hanafis, you know, raise your hands, right? I am te praying how Ibn Mas'ud taught me how to pray from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a valid opinion, right? And then people will start fights and arguments. Or, you know, sometimes, you know, during uh, 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 Jumu'ah. Yeah, Taraweeh, you know, 8 and 20. Pray. If you want to pray 8, go pray somewhere that prays 8. You want to pray 20? Go pray somewhere that prays 20. Alhamdulillah, in Southern California, we have, we have everything. We have options, you know? You know we're, we're not limited, we're not stuck in one thing, right? And it, it, it's simple. Let's say you pray 20 here, right? I've seen sometimes a little, little bit of both, right? So let, let's, let's say someone here, they want to pray 20 and the Imam prays 20. Khayr. You want to pray 20, but the Imam prays 8. Make a decision. Either I pray here, let me drive 15 minutes in any direction and I will get some place that prays 20. Right? No, no issue at all. Make things easy. Right? Or moon sighting. You know, someone they do this calculation, someone they're going to do, you know, global sighting, someone they're going to do local sighting. Alhamdulillah, we got in Southern California, any, all three of these, 30 minutes away. <laughs> you want calculation? Go to a masjid that prays calculation. That's fine. You want global sighting? Drive another five minutes, you'll get someone that does that. You want local sighting? Drive ten minutes, you'll get there. Don't worry. Right? If there is haram being done, right, then you go, and again, then you, the second category, then I speak and address it in a, in a proper manner. Right? If the masjid is doing something, you know, haram and inappropriate, and then I go and I, I don't go and I say, well, everyone here is misguided and kafir. No, I go and I speak. Who can I talk to at this masjid? You know, this is what has come to my attention. Can we fix this scenario? Can we, can we fix this scenario? You know, what happens? Right? Making things easy. Well, again, so many times we speak just without knowledge. Right? You know, you see someone who in Jumu'ah, they're not raising their hand. Because they're saying, my job is to listen right now. It's ikhtilaf, there's no problem. Right? Even like, like I mentioned before, technically, I'm a Hanafi. When there's nazila, when there's a difficulty, we do qunut only in fajr. Only in fajr. Because the Prophet ﷺ did it in Fajr, right? And other madhab, they say he did it in Fajr, we can also do it in Maghrib and Isha. So khayr, the other madhab do it in Maghrib and Isha. If I'm leading Maghrib and Isha, normally I don't do Qunut. In Fajr, I do it every morning. But for Maghrib and Isha, I don't. But here, uh, Ammu Ridwan, he said, do it. So I said, no, you do it. He said, no, you do it. So I said, okay, fine. I'm, I'm going to sit here and argue with you for how long, right? Khayr is a valid opinion. If he tells me to do something haram, I'm not going to be like, oh, oh no. He tells me to do something haram, that's a, I'm not doing it. But if he says, this is, I know this is a valid opinion, I know this is something that many ulama say, and it's a valid, reliable, trusted opinion, khayr. This is not the opinion that I generally take, but no problem. No problem with that. And again, making things easy in this scenario, right? And again, this isn't something new, this isn't something weak, this isn't something, you know, soft, right? In the same scenario, Right, uh, again, because many times, you know, uh, we, uh, uh, we forget or we just don't know that many of the greatest ulama, they did the same thing, right? So, for example, again, in the Hanafi madhab, for example, right? In Fajr, Qunut is only done during Nazila. Again, a distressful, difficult, extremely, you know, harsh time. But for Imam Shafi'i, rahimullah, he said, it's sunnah to do Qunut every day in Fajr, right? And so someone came to one of the students of Abu Hanifa and he said, would you, what do you say about praying Fajr behind someone that is Qunut in Fajr? Meaning, is it a lot? Because technically, the opinion of the Hanafi is no, it's bid'ah unless it's nazila. And his response was, he didn't go, oh no, I'm not going to. He said, are you asking me I'm not going to pray behind Imam al Shafi'i? I will pray behind Imam al Shafi'i. Don't bring this in here. I have my opinion, I know what I do. But if there's another Imam who has another valid opinion, no problem. No problem, right? Another, another and I, I say this because some of these are, are common, you know, uh, uh, misconceptions that people have. Again, for uh, 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 
you know, for the Hanafis, Malikis, and Shafi'is, for them to do Mas'a al kufain to wipe over their socks, their uh, rulings are a bit more strict. A bit more strict. Because they want the leather kufain, the leather sock, or something that is as strong or as thick as a leather sock. But the Hanabila, the Madhra Imam Ahmad is any sock, Jawrabain, even a thin cotton sock. So, but in my madhab, for Hanafis, Malikis, and Shafi'is, wudu is not valid unless it's on a thick sock, not on a regular dress sock. But if an Imam is leading whose opinion is that I can wipe over my dress sock, it's a valid opinion. So, no, that's his salah. If everyone was to say, that is not my method of the Imam, guess what? <laughs> Don't pray in Jama'ah. Because someone's going to have a difference of opinion than you. Right? So would I wipe over a dress sock? No, that's my opinion. If the Imam has no problem wiping over a dress sock, no problem. That's his method. It's fine. It's valid opinion. It's valid opinion. Nothing, you know, wrong with that. And so again, I should know and keep in mind, maybe I see someone doing something. Do I know 100% this is haram? Maybe there's a difference of opinion, especially in many of the rulings of salah. Right? There is a lot of difference of opinion. I'm not saying someone is doing sajda first and then they say salam here and then they do. I'm not saying they read Fatiha backwards. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying the general actions of salah. There's difference of opinion. No issue with that at all. And again, a reminder to all of us if I don't know, don't speak. If I don't know, don't speak. Right, one time. Uh, because if I speak, I could be, number one, you know, أَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لِي بِهِ عِلْمٍ I will speak against Allah without having knowledge. And number two, I will make something so difficult on someone else. Right, one time, again, in the point of saying, I don't know, no problem at all. We are awam here, we're, we're regular people. The greatest of the ulama have no problem, the greatest of scholars have no problem saying, I don't know. One time, someone came to Imam Malik, rahimahullah, right? Imam Malik, the Imam of Medina. And I forget, either this person came from like China or they came from like Spain. So very, very, very far away. He came to him, he said, you know, I have a lot of questions from my people. So he said, okay, first question. Imam Malik said, la adri, I don't know. Okay, second question. Imam Malik said, la adri, I don't know. Third question, Imam Malik said, la adri, I don't know. Fourth question, fifth, dozen questions, two dozen questions. Imam Malik said, I don't know. Imam Malik is a muhaddith, he's a faqih, he's a, one of the greatest scholars. But these questions were probably things just that never came across. And so the man is saying, I came all the way to ask Imam Malik to tell me, I don't know. What do I go back and tell my people? He said, go and tell them. Imam Malik said, I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you want me to do? You want me to make up something? If I make up something, I am sinful, your life will be difficult. So I'm telling you, I don't know. Go ask someone else. Right? So if I don't know, say I don't know, go ask someone else. One last example I'll mention in this. And again, be because sometimes really we, we see this, especially when it comes to sometimes there's a, 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 a person who's come from another part of the world. You know, their method is slightly different. Or they're a new Muslim. And we just jump on them. Right? Because they don't know or they just have another opinion. Right? One time the Sahaba, a group of them were traveling. And one of the Sahaba, uh, 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 either they got hurt in such a way, they got a huge gash in their head. Huge gash, like bleeding out of their skull. And so they slept that night and he woke up and he had a wet dream. He had to do ghusl. Janaba. Right? He had a wet dream. It was impure. So he had to do ghusl. And so in the middle of the desert, he's got a giant wound in his head. It's freezing cold. So he asked the other Sahaba, he said, the regular ruling is I'm supposed to do ghusl. But guys, if I do ghusl, I might die, but it's freezing. I'm not, it's, least I will get is an infection. Worst case, I die. Do you see any other way for me? They said, no, we don't know anything else. He did ghusl, he died. The companions, they went back to the Prophet wasallam, and they said, this is what happened. They said, why did, why did you say that? Just ask if you don't know how do you cure your disease. Do ask. So if you don't know, you should have asked. Guess what? If that Sahabi waited three days and the Prophet said, No, you do wudu like this. One fajr, he just makes it up three days later, no problem. If I don't know, 
Why are you speaking without knowledge? You're giving one opinion when there's multiple opinions. And this is why, you know, last, you know, the job of a mufti is very hard. Because the mufti, is, you answer questions, and the job of a mufti is, I want to facilitate you to be able to practice deen. I want you to be able to pray. I want you to come closer to Allah. I do not want to push you away from Allah. Our last category, our last sitting on is making things difficult on other people in the dunya, in worldly matters. Right? And this is, you know, if we know, we may know brothers and sisters that they do a lot of things. Maybe someone cooks, maybe someone drives, maybe someone is very generous, maybe someone, uh, 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 you know, listens, talks to people a lot. If I know there are people like that, don't abuse that. Right? If I know one brother, you know, he's always willing to, you know, cook a meal every day. Assalamu alaikum, how are you doing? Can, can I get some food from you? Right? Or someone, you know, he, he, he doesn't mind driving a lot. Every day, hey, can you drive me? I need to go 400 miles. And then can you drive me back 400 miles? Don't make things difficult on other people. Don't make things difficult on other people. If I know someone is in a difficult situation, someone says, you know, yeah, you know, I have my brother's wedding tomorrow. And then I say, oh, can you help me go move my house? He's got other things to do. Keep in mind the scenario that other people are in. Don't go and make things difficult and burdensome on other people. That doesn't mean that we don't ask. Someone is faqir, someone is you know, poor, someone doesn't have food. There's nothing wrong with asking. But don't become a difficulty and a burden on other people. Right? And again, this should be balanced. In, in our first section, right, there's yusr, I, if I have a need, if I have a difficulty, go and ask people. Nothing wrong with that. But don't abuse other people. Do not misuse other people. Don't make things difficult for other people. And we'll end on um, one ayah of the, from the Quran and one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But again, Allah He is teaching us this lesson Himself in the in the ayah of Shahru Ramadan al-Ladi Unzila fi al-Quran. Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. Allah He says, and you have to fast. And if you are sick or you're traveling, fa'iddatun min ayam al-ukhr, make those days up at another time. At the end of that, Allah He says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ فَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ Allah wants to make things easy for you. He doesn't want to make things difficult for you. So why are you going to make things difficult for yourself? Allah wants to make things easy for you. Allah could have said, I don't care if you're fasting, I don't care if you're sick, you have to fast. But no. Our Rabb, Rahman, Rahim, Kareem, right? He's so kind, so caring, so generous. So compassion, he said, no, I'll make things easy for you. I don't want things to be difficult for you. And so he built our religion like this. That's why the Prophet ﷺ teaches us the deen al-yusr. The religion is sometimes easy, but doable. It's doable. There is no hukam that you have or I have that I cannot do. If I can't stand and pray, what is my hukam? What is my ruling? I sit. If I can't sit and pray, I lay down. If I am too sick to fast, get up another time or pay fidya, pay the money. Or, you know, I'm too poor to pay zakah. Guess what? My ruling is, I don't pay zakah, I give zakah. There is no ruling that Allah has made that I cannot do. If it is, perhaps there's another ruling there that will adjust the ruling for me. That will adjust, you know, the ruling for me. And this is the meaning of, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will not put a burden, an obligation on you that you cannot do. If it's an obligation you cannot do, I guarantee you ask an alim, ask a scholar, and he'll say, no, this is the scenario for you. This is the scenario for you. The last hadith that we'll end on is when the Prophet he told his companions that we're going to a new place. They were going to meet new Muslims and even non-Muslims. He said, Bashiru wala tunafiru, yassiru wala tu'asiru. Give good news. Give people, the, tell people, there is reward, there is jannah, there is ease. وَلَا تُنَفِّرُوا Don't drive people away. Don't make people hateful and spiteful. وَيَسِّرُوا وَلَا تُعَسِّرُوا Make things easy. Make things simple. Don't make things hard. Don't make things difficult. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from what? يَسِّرُونَ May Allah make us from those people that are easy on ourselves in this world, in, in the matters of this world, in the matters of the hereafter, and we make things easy, excuse me, for other people in matters of this life. 
and the hereafter. May Allah save us from difficulty in this life. May Allah save us from being people that make things difficult. Allahumma yassir umurana. Allahumma yassir umurana. Allah make all of our affairs easy. Allahumma ansar ikhwanina fi Palestine. Allahumma kun ma'ahum. Allahumma kun lahum nasira wa mu'ina wa mu'ayyidan wa zahira. Oh Allah, give them your help, your aid, your victory, your support, your victory. Oh Allah, heal them. Oh Allah, cure them. Oh Allah, give them strength and give them victory. Wa alayka bis sahayin bil mu'atadeen. Allahumma, oh Allah, deal with their Zionist oppressors. Oh Allah, deal with them and remove the suffering and pain that they are causing and inflicting on our brothers and sisters. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al-azim. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. I'm completely far from any form of imperfection. Ya Allah, all the praise and thanks belong to you. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. There is nothing worthy of our worship or devotion except for you. Nastaghfiruka. We seek your forgiveness. Wa natubu ilayk. And we turn to you in repentance. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yom deen. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. O Allah, we end by asking you to bless, protect, honor, and compliment our beloved Prophet, our Messenger, our Umar, Muhammad Rasulullah, his family and friends, companions, and everyone that follows the way until the end of time. O Allah, enter us amongst them. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. If anyone has any questions, you know, I'll be here. Absolutely, even, even most, exactly, right? For the umara, for the leaders, it, 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 it's their responsibility. Right? It's not the job of a five-year-old to make it easy on his parents. It's up to the parents to make it easy on their... Whoever is in charge, whoever has the capability and the ability, it's, it's their job to do so. Yeah, absolutely correct. I think that there are some that say, I'm forgetting right now who says it, but some they, they say, and then you do it uh, uh, silently as well. Yeah. Barakallahu